so what's the deal here? With Junior? Yeah. Uh, I've been training him for a long time. He just doesn't know it yet. You know, uh, yeah. I've been fine tuning him and he's uh, almost ready to take the bull by the horns and, and he's gonna be getting his captain's license next year. And he's well seasoned and he, he knows what to do and he's been doing it with me since he could walk. So he's caught more fish than most of my clients. <laughs> a healthy dose of pride. You can see it in Captain Wes Bedell's eyes when he speaks about his son. His namesake too. Wes Jr. is following in his proud papa's footsteps, learning the ropes, but doing it his own way. But a father's footsteps can trip you up. Captain Wes knows the tricks of the trade, where the trap doors are. Junior doesn't. It's about letting the kid make mistakes. With time, mistakes become lessons learned. Wes Jr. has a leg up for sure. A veteran guide father for a professor, and Florida's Gulf Coast for a classroom. A sophomore at Salt U. Florida has no shortage of name brand fishing destinations. The Keys, Miami, Palm Beach. But Collier County is a secret of sorts. The big cities in the Sunshine State have an air about them. But Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades set the benchmark for quiet cool. Tourism is a major element, but it doesn't reek of it. No theme park type crowds. The towns aren't aglow in souvenir shop fluorescence. Collier respects the environment. After all, migratory animals were the first tourist here. Collier County in Southwest Florida runs the gamut from the moneyed enclaves of Naples to the untamed fringe of the Everglades. The fishing spots we explore are equally diverse. For offshore, it's the Gulf of Mexico. For inshore, Marco Island and Rookery Bay. Captain Wes Bedell of On a Mission Fishing Charters has been guiding and fishing locally for more than 15 years. Yeah! This is my office and I, I, uh, I love it. You know, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to leave. I mean, I would never leave. I have amazing fishing in my backyard, five minutes from my house, any direction. You know, we can head straight west and go fish the wrecks with Carmen and Cobia, or I can go pull the skiff in the backcountry for snook and red. So the options are more limitless. As Captain West says, this place has it all. Backcountry and blue water, both minutes from land. 10 miles from shore is the antiquated D Tower. Every 90 seconds, an alarm sounds to alert vessels. It can be annoying if you haven't spent time around these micro-ecosystems. To those who know what the tower holds, it's a one-note symphony. Give me a barracuda. Graham should have called me instead of you. I could have taken him fishing. <laughs> Oh, hook him out. Shut up! I can get another one. That's what I wanted to do. It happens. Jump. Competition is healthy between father and son. Junior loses the kudo, which is followed by a father knows best moment.
the Cape Romano Dome House south of Marco Island dots the horizon. While the alien-like residence has gotten its fair share of attention, it sits abandoned, living a new life as an artificial reef. While this reef may have been an accident, the new ones are anything but. Paradise Reef is one of the largest artificial reef projects in the Western Hemisphere. It came together in 2015, when the Collier County Economic Recovery Task Force deployed 18,000 tons of concrete along the Gulf Coast. It required a combination of BP disaster funds, private donations, and plenty of local support. Diane Flagg serves as chair of the task force. We started actually deployment in January of 2015, but it was several years prior to that that we were doing the planning and the permitting. The goal of the 36 artificial reefs is to amplify ecotourism. It's also important from the aspect of the environment because most of the concrete that we're using out there is recycled and it helps the environment in several ways. The fish population is getting tremendous pressure from both the recreational and the commercial. So it's important to take this program and continue it on for the next generation. There are high hopes for the reef's economic and environmental impact. The goal of the task force is to um, look at various projects can, that can assist the community to be an economic driver, but also an environmental benefit. And this project was both. More divers, anglers, and sportsmen means more business for marinas, hotels, tackle shops, you name it. A local ecosystem with national reach. Captain West directs us inshore to sample a whole other world. A backcountry maze filled with a mixed bag. Captain West heads into the mangrove maze of Rookery Bay. The target? Anything with a tail. Switching up from offshore to inshore, we ready our gear. When heading from offshore to skinny water, the speedy and versatile Yellowfin 24 Bay does the job. The Yellowfin is powered by a Mercury 350 Verado. The high-powered, compact outboard lets you adapt to quick changing conditions. On board, the Simrad NSS-12 EVO-2 combines a chart plotter, broadband sonar, and HD structure scan in one touchscreen unit. The Yeti Hopper 30 is compact and leak-proof. Thanks to the shoulder strap, you're hands-free as you wade through any situation. Penn's Carnage 2 and Slammer 3 provide durability and a strong drag system to fight any fish in any water. The next level technology behind spider wires fluorocarbon, superline, and monofilament means less breakoffs. Costa sunglasses have heavy duty polarized lenses for optimal clarity during long days in the sun. A custom fiberglass replica by King Sailfish release mounts is the perfect reminder of your storybook catch. At the northern end of the 10,000 islands lies Rookery Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve, one of the country's few mangrove sanctuaries. 110,000 acres of root, swamp, and scrub. Captain West works the waters, finding cuts and pools for all sorts of inshore species. A huge variety of different opportunities here. You can fish in the backcountry, in the mangroves, snook, redfish, tarpon, trout, 
the list go on and on. At the intersection of river, stream, and sea, there are surely fish to be found. The canal tuna, as Captain West puts it. Of course, these aren't tuna. Jack Creval show up, as they do in most of our episodes. It's a big Jack. He's kind of going yeah, up current right now. Dude, I mean, I think he ate it before it hit the water. Yeah. I swear. <laughs> canal tuna. Canal, canal tuna. tuna. Damn. Yeah, buddy. As with every Jack we catch, it's a sign that friends are nearby. Nice trout, yeah. Good job, Wes. Good job, buddy. Golden back here. After sunset, we go way inshore, spending the night fishing the dock lights of our residential community. In the canals of Isla Capri, just north of Marco Island, Captain Wes is looking to catch a snook on fly. It isn't easy. As in most cases, the sun is less patient. He takes a shortcut with spinning gear. Sean? There you go, buddy. Good job. <laughs> Play everything? Hmm. Maybe Offspring knows best. Nice, Weston. There you go. Our time with Captain Wes and his son has come to a close. It's onward to see another perspective on the backcountry with guide Captain Joe Casaro. He's a, well, he's an all-in type of guy. Captain Joe Casaro has been guiding in Collier County for the past six years. He's a self-assured captain, compulsive about every layer of fishing. Take, for example, hooking your bait right. There's the deal, man. Everybody goes through the nostril. You go through the nostril, you get double hooked all the time. You come up, you scoop the eyeball over, you come through the cartilage, you never get double hooked. He chased his childhood dream and finally caught up with it. Captain Joe was once in the shoes of his clients, a rook with fresh eyes. Today, it's home. My favorite thing about it is because I can kind of put myself in my client's uh, shoes, you know? So I remember when I was a kid and my dad brought me down here, I was totally in awe of just the nature and the water, and I could understand where they're coming from. Now I've been fishing in some fashion professionally for about 15 years, but I've been out here for six. I always did it kind of part-time. I finally had the, the guts to ditch what I was into for so many years and, and go at it full bore. I've been wanting to do this ever since I was a kid, since my dad was taking me to the Keys. Captain Joe takes us to the top of the 10,000 Islands, a string of mangrove clusters off the coast of Southwest Florida. The plan of attack? Work the mangroves. Fish stack up against ledges below the branches. We use them to our advantage. Whether it be casting near them or directly using them, a branch is like an extra arm. Captain Joe calls it Everglades kite fishing. That's my favorite way to fish. Put it on a tree and watch it get smoked. It's like kite fishing in the Everglades without a kite. The cool thing
thing about out here is, I mean, we got three types of grouper we could fish for. I mean, there's just so many different fish. And that, you know, there's always something willing to bite. It's really a unique spot. You know, once you get to learn it, you know, pretty much all year you can go target a certain species. The problem is, I mean, a lot of people give up because it gets harder through certain times of the year to target a certain species. You don't get as many. Like, you know, you get spoiled in the summer on snook and yeah. tarpon and stuff like that. And then you go try and find them this time of year. You know, a lot of people don't even fish out here this time of year, honestly. After pulling most of the inshore club to the boat, I gotta go over there. Captain Joe decides to get off the boat. This one's worth going overboard for. Yeah, All right. Go, Look at that guy. Good job, buddy. Captain Joe is not losing this fish. Did you get him? Yeah, I got him. All right. Him. Look at that guy. Good job, buddy. Gad grouper. I wouldn't call it a rarity to catch one in the backcountry. Young gags prefer habitats like mangroves and seagrass beds. They move into deeper water as they age. This one is right at maturity. Joe, are there a lot of these fish around here? Yeah, you can pretty much target them. Um, they've been in here. It's been pretty consistent. Is this, in your opinion, a juvenile? Is this something that's pretty common here? No, this one's a good size, dude. Yeah, this one's good. I mean, I think the biggest one I've ever pulled out of the trees is about 30, 31, something like that. Yeah. Um, no, you get a lot of juvies. This one's a keeper, dude. He's yeah. over 24. We ready the bait, tie up some lines, and head near shore. A different variety of species exists five miles from Big Marco Pass. He's back. A flounder makes an appearance. Fish. These scaled throw rugs might seem lazy, but they shake like the best of them. Oh my god, look at the size of this flounder. flounder. With two eyes on the top side of their body, they're always looking to bite. Dude, that is a pretty good sized flounder. Not bad at all. Hey, cool. Come on, baby, be a sheepy. This species has more nicknames than Babe Ruth. Convict fish, bait bandit, joker, the sheep's head. Ask for a smile, and it might display its human-like teeth. Get him, Joe. Something better. Spanish mackerel on deck. The smallest member of the mackerel family, and this runt makes us work. Oh, you're hooked up. Feels like a dinosaur to me. To round it out, Goliath grouper, the largest of the grouper family, thus the name. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> Maybe the most viral fish around due to its often obscene size and weight. A hundred bucks says there's a video of a Goliath in your Facebook feed right now. This one has some growing to do. Nevertheless, it's a Hulk. Collier County has multiple backdrops. 
it's not one size fits all. Upscale to swamp, glitz to glades. Florida's paradise coast, as it's been called in the advertisements and billboards. The guides we met say it's an accurate moniker. I love everything about it. I love the weather. I love the bugs. <laughs> I love the fishing. I love the people. And uh, it's just, it's a beautiful place to live. Yeah. I'll tell you what, dude, it's awesome. I mean, there's so much variety. You know, there's usually something always that you can catch. We're seeing stories that are just getting started. The new artificial reefs, slowly growing coral, plants, and other fish magnets will impact the future and then some. And the guides in the area have another Captain West in their crew. I feel like I'm teaching him, I'm giving him this, this amazing gift and this amazing career and something that I love so much and I know that is dear to his heart. He, he loves it as much as well and I, I see it in his eyes, how much he appreciates it. It's so nice to see him grow and yeah. become the fisherman that I wish I could have been at, at 17. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's definitely coming into a, a, a lifelong career and it's more than a career, it's a, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. You know, it's not just a, a job. Despite the attractions, Collier keeps its cool. It knows how to duck its head and lay low. It shouldn't be a surprise how this place got its tranquil vibe. See those people? That view? That ocean? They're the strong, silent type. Who knows if Collier can stay this way? <laughs>